Dwayne's World on SCNSA. Welcome back to Dwayne's World. Great to have your company. He's a Brownlow medalist. Uh, he's a Port Adelaide Premiership player. And uh, like I, was involved with the Port Adelaide Football Club from the age of 13. Invited down and uh, spent some great young years growing up as a Port Adelaide person. And uh, now he's on the board. Gavin Wanganeen joins me after being voted on on Friday. And uh, it is an exciting time for the Port Adelaide Football Club to have Gavin Wanganeen in that role. And I'm sure it's pretty exciting for Gavin as well. Gavin, welcome to the program. Great to have you on. Yeah, thanks for having me, Dwayne. Yeah, look forward to it. Absolutely. It's, uh, it is exciting. I, I know that you have really been looking at the club for a long, long period of time. Even when you're at the Essendon Football Club as a superstar, you still felt in many ways like a, a Port Adelaide person looking at that club and looking at what Port Adelaide's doing every day of the week. And uh, to come back and be able to have some sort of impact on the future of the club is a huge moment. It certainly is. Dwayne, uh, it's um, you know spending so many years as a junior throughout throughout the ranks at the footy club, and then playing in the SNFL as a 16 year old, and then obviously my wonderful stint with Essendon, my, the six years I spent there, and um, was very special to me as well. But then going back home to Port Adelaide, where it all began for, for me, and play for another 10 years at that great club in the AFL, of course, and to experience, you know, Premiership glory in 04 um, was, yeah, I, I feel like, like I have to pinch myself, <laughs> to, um, you know, just to know that I've been associated with such a historical football club. And now that I've been given an opportunity by the members, uh, a member elected position on the board, um, it feels really uh, special to, to know that I've been given an opportunity to play a role in, you know, making some really good decisions and, um, laying down you know, some really good foundations to, to keep this club in good stead going forward. So I'm really looking forward to, to that. What did you make of the annual general meeting? Uh, was it the first one you've been to? And what did you make of the Port Adelaide fans there? And they were a little bit upset about some issues with the Port Adelaide Football Club. How did you find it all? Yeah, it was my first GM. So <laughs> it was very interesting and it was... Um, it was actually yeah nice to see the passion of those supporters, the the true heart and soul of you know the football club. Uh, they take their they make the time to come to to the GM and uh, I guess have their say and let go of some of their frustrations and it, you know some of the stuff they were talking about was really uh, was really good um, and love their passion. Right? Mm. As you know, you love it. I love it. So it was good to hear them. And they're pretty passionate about this one captain thing that Port Adelaide's always had. It's been a tradition for 150 years. Where do you stand on the dual captain's situation? Because uh, when it gets thrown at the board, you're going to have to rubber stamp it one way or the other. Vote for it or vote against it. Yeah, it's, it's going to be very interesting. Um, I, 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 I've just just come into the into the board now, and I think next week there'll be a meeting and talks around what the football department. Um, uh, d- decision or what they'd like to do in regards to that. So, as you as you know, and f- to the supporter, uh, to the people out there who don't know, yeah, Port Adelaide have always had that one captain, and they've always worn the number one number. So, it um, it will be yeah, a decision that's made very carefully with a lot of thought and in, and with the best interest of the club as a whole. Uh, it'll be made in that that regard. So. It'll, it'll, yeah, so we haven't. Yeah, so I look forward to that, Dwayne. <laughs> well, I mean, the club's obviously, the club's obviously going to, you know, decide, or the football department would decide and put it to you guys. So they might actually talk you guys who don't necessarily support it, talk you into it because they've got a a great reason. But personally, what's what's your thoughts now? Are you for just the one captain going forward? If if that was your choice and your choice alone? Oh. Uh, I would have loved for you to have asked me that, you know, probably a week ago, <laughs> two weeks ago. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it with a different cat now. And yep. it's what I think is probably irrelevant. But, you know, you know, it's whatever is best for the football club. And, um, you know, the, the, the coaching group and the football department have a wonderful understanding of the types of characters um, and strengths and weaknesses of our players off the field, which is just as important 
as the strengths uh, on the field, which I, I, I've seen and, and understand uh, pretty well what I see on the football field. But off, off the field, I'm coming into that environment now where I'm going to be understanding over the next few weeks what sort of characters we have, what sort of leadership qualities the, the candidates have and, and how best are we going to make a decision that gets the right leader or leaders. I mean, look, um, it's going to be a very, very interesting process, but I can rest, I can, you can rest assured that the decision that gets made will be made as a collective and, and for the for the future of the footy club. And um, there won't be any um, decisions that, well, won't be rushed into, that's for sure, but I'm sure the right decision will be made. Whatever decision it is, uh, there'll be full support from the board uh, and all together in this as one. And never say that uh, what you think is irrelevant because you're actually on the board because what you think is extremely relevant. So let me ask you about the prison bar <laughs> jumper. Uh, should Port Adelaide be allowed to wear it in all home games in 2020? Because uh, the prison bar jumper, from what I'm told, will only be allowed to be worn once in a showdown as Port Adelaide's home jumper in that showdown, not every home game. What do you? Where do you stand on, on the prison bar jumper? Is that just for next year or is that for the... No, for 2020, year? for that 150-year anniversary, 150 yeah. Year. Yeah, just okay, for that year. Yeah, look, okay, well, that's a fairly special number, 150 years in the history of the Adelaide Footy Club. So if they get the opportunity to wear it once, it'll be a bonus because we've never really have never really worn it except for that one final, I think, and maybe uh, in 2003 um, we were in, a, in, a, in one of those matches. So... The history of the football club, it's all, all the port supporters going back uh, over 150 years. It's so famous, the prison bars jumper. I mean, you wore it, Wayne, yeah. I've worn it. It's, it's such a special jumper. Should we be able you to know? wear it when we want to, though? Should we be able to wear it more often, maybe once a year in a in a heritage round that uh, we deem as fit for us, for our own heritage going forward, uh, rather than be dictated to? Should we wear it once a year? Oh well, look, yeah. Look, I think um, that would be nice, wouldn't it? It, it, it shows who, who we are as a club. It brings back uh, the, the true essence of, of our club's history. So that would would be a wonderful opportunity if we ever get given that. So that's something that uh, I haven't been. I'm sure there's been a lot of conversations going on at board level around the prison bars, and mm. I look forward to having my first board meeting and listening to you know where we're at with that and. Um, and how far we've come and, and what our chances are of, you know, it becoming a, a more common, uh, you know, that we can wear it on a regular, you know, more of a regular basis, whether it's once a year or twice a year at certain times, whether it's in Adelaide, uh, who knows? But, um, look, wouldn't it be nice to be able to wear it on a regular basis? And um, that's something that, yeah, I'll, I'll learn more towards, um, you know, as I, as I, as I see it. But definitely a passport player. I'd love to see the players wearing that from time to time. Michelangelo Rucci mentioned that he hasn't heard what you stand for, what uh, what you're on the board oh, okay. to bring to the board. Uh, yeah. I, I, and I'm, I'd love you to answer that question for him if you can and for all the members that are listening to this. What, uh, what do you stand for as a person and what are you hoping to bring to the port board? Okay, yeah, well, I thought well, I had the, the presser on Friday uh, at the footy club, and I, 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 I mentioned the fact that I bring in the, come into the, this position with a lot of football knowledge and expertise. So, I think it's, there's, there's two prongs to my approach. I think the first one will be the uh, understanding of our uh, of our brand of football, the way we play our football, uh, what do we stand for. And for me, I, I love the attacking, uh, the, the creative aggressive tacking brand of football and, and, and through the corridor. So um, that's something that's always been a Port Adelaide um, style of play. And, and if you look at it, it's been a style of play that uh, wins premierships. And um, if you're not able to tack the corridor on a regular basis and play with a bit of flair and full-on excitement and, and, and take the game by the scruff of the neck, you're probably not going to be you know making the finals too regularly. So... The style of football we play, that's something that I'll be very, very uh, engaged with and working closely with the football committee. And also the other side is the community. So the Indigenous programs, our other wider community programs at the Port Adelaide Football Club have been so um, so good at over many, many years. We're, we are a community club. We're, we're a club for the people. We um, like to give back and 
Um, I've been involved with the Indigenous programs uh, closely with Paul Vandenberg at the Full A Footy Club for about eight, eight to nine years now, and our programs are, you know, some of the best in the AFL. So I look forward to continually keep them running strong, enhancing them, and uh, growing them, and keeping our our footprint out in the in the wider community as true Port Adelaide um, people. You mentioned our brand. Uh, we uh, Port Adelaide fell from fifth. To 12th last season, dropped seven spots on the AFL ladder, and that was in a year where Ken was in the first of a five year deal. Are you concerned about the length of contract that Ken Hinckley's got as coach? Oh, look, um, I, you know, what I've seen from Ken, look, I, I like, and, and hearing um, him at the gym on Friday and, and, and uh, what he had to say in regards to what sort of style of football and you're going to see from the playing group this year. I really liked what I heard. So um, I, I love the relationships that, um, and I know for a fact that he has great relationships one-on-one with the players. So I think, um, uh, you know, what, what the length of the contract, um, you know, sometimes they can be a bit tricky and sometimes, um, but I just think that if he can, just, you know, get off to a really good start to the year and focus on, you know, playing exciting brand of football, I think that'll just take care of itself, Dwayne. I mean, it's... Uh, the time will tell, won't it? Yep. And, uh, but I'm, I'm really confident in in, uh, in Ken and the football department. We've brought in two great assistants, two former Premiership players, and Brett Montgomery and Jared Schofield. And Jared Schofield's got an unbelievable record in the waffle out at Subiaco and winning multiple Premierships. So he, he'll bring in a really fresh outlook and so will Monty and um, and like I said, I, I really like what I, what I heard in terms of the, the style of footy that the boys are going to be playing this year under Ken. So he, he, he's been the first to acknowledge that we went away from playing um, the attacking brand that we, we were all known we were known for in 2013 and, and 14. So uh, I think that'll be coming back, and um, it remains to be seen, I guess, um, whether that you know, length of contract was uh, the right one or, or the wrong one. So uh, that leads me to my next question. That is, you're sound, sounding fairly confident that Port will be a contender for the flag again this season. You think we've got the list to finish, you know, top four, top six, something in that order rather than outside the eight, twelfth lot we did last year? Yeah, well, I think we, we we need to go into every season believing we can make the finals. And, and that's that that's a goal, um, I'm sure. And I'm very confident in the list that we have. Yeah, sure, we, we, we lost, you know, outstanding players in uh, Wingard and... Um, uh, Pollock, yep. um, but we've brought in some really good young talent. Um, Burton from from Hawthorne can bring some really good stuff as well. So I think the list is good, um, and I'm really confident that we're going to play a very exciting brand of footy that's going to put us in touch with with, uh, with those top sides. And we just got to look at what um, West Coast did, did last year, Dwayne. I mean, yep. they came was it 13th? They came from 13th, so. You know, they're almost a, there's almost a template there for all the other clubs to look at and say, look, they've come from from 13th. So let's believe in our system. Let's let's have a crack. Let's make some tweaks. Um, let's be bold. Let's be brave. Let's have do well with our structures and um, and the belief. You just you know, you just don't know how far that can take you. So I'm really confident the players are good enough. That's for sure. And the coaching staff are the right ones. So really look forward to you know this year and hopefully the boys can bring out a really consistent, exciting brand of footy that they were known for in, you know, 213 and 14. Absolutely. Let's uh, hope so. Gravin, great to have you on the program. Really appreciate you joining me. And, uh, yeah, Collingwood uh, obviously rising up from 13th last year, even though the West uh, Coast Eagles yep. uh, were, what, they made the eight the year before, so they went from eighth to winning the flag. But Collingwood from 13th into the grand final. Oh, great. Collingwood. Yeah, that's all right. But okay, that's a, I, know where you, I know where you were headed. Thanks a lot for your time. Good luck with it. And I'll see you at the Members' Conference uh, this coming Saturday afternoon. I look forward to seeing you there. No worries, mate. Thank you. Cheers. Gabba Wangadine, new board member with the Port Adelaide Football Club, joining me and uh, bringing a whole heap of stuff to our community engagement program and the Indigenous programs and... Yeah, the dual captain situation didn't necessarily want to weigh into it, but that's going to be a pretty big decision that he is going to have to make a decision on, along with the rest of the board members, as to whether they make that big change to 150 years of history with the Port Adelaide Football Club.